ready 5 seconds sir with regard to the banking laws there is much to be said after the nationalization of banks several issues have cropped up here the government proposes certain amendments out of which some are necessary but i would like to draw the attention of the honorable minister to the banking laws bill of 1993 in which there is a proposal for prohibition of acceptance of deposits by unincorporated bodies about this i would like to stress this point because society has different structure in this country there are certain money lenders who are rendering some service to the people your branches have not reached there that entire structure or infrastructure whatever you name it is not there because of that saraf associations have made representation to the government on the way in which you are stopping this if we say you can collect deposits from 10 people only then this entire thing will come to a stand still your other amendments i support but as far as this thing is concerned i would like the government to think the basic it is difficult to understand the basic objective and much less to appreciate this underlying objective behind the introduction of the bill and more particularly the amendment mentioned above which is likely to have a far reaching effect on various sectors of the economy if the government is determined to protect and promote the interest of the depositors or root out malpractices on the part of certain elements in the informal credit market then there are various ways and means by which these aims could be achieved it is apprehended that such a drastic measure will result in squeezing the source of credit in the informal credit market which will not only paralyze the normal course of conduct of business in the urban and rural areas but also provide wide scope for unhealthy and undesirable practice a situation which can hardly be viewed with calmness we humbly feel that rigorous restrictions on acceptance of deposits by the unincorporated bodies as also draconian measures to control them would only cause serious damage to the economy resulting in a hardship to millions of people without any commensurate benefit to anybody now sir this is the representation that they have made since all the branches of our nationalized banks have not reached the rural people in the far flung areas what would happen to those people sir having stated this these people had approached me in mumbai then sir all the saraf associations are already agitated over it now i have got a memorandum which i think has been submitted to the government also it is gujarat state saraf association likewise that 
ag agitation has spread everywhere and there is an apprehension that if the government goes on with this provision then the entire transactions which are being carried on smoothly at places where no banking facility is available will come to a stop and stand still and the rural people and the lower middle class people will be very much affected now they have stated the reason why it is an unjustified move and what is the magnitude of the problem there are certain implication on vital sectors the move will be an obstruction to informal credit structure it will be a death blow to dis dis distributive trade it will have a detrimental effect on rural sector then it has been mentioned that it will have a crippling impact on indigenous banking it will aggravate unemployment there are certain drastic panel provision about which also they have stated they have mentioned about the erosion of moral values also well sir we may keep it aside we all should be very much concerned with the moral values also now it has a far reaching impact they have stated all it in their memorandum i would only like to highlight one or two main points it has to be realized that the informal credit structure comprising of trade business commission agents and indigenous bankers has been rendering valuable services since times immemorial to various sectors of the society and more particularly in rural and semi urban areas what is more they occupied a place of pride due to personalized service to both clients and depositors coupled with high efficiency and prompt service at low overhead cost even though greater percentage of informed credit structure is unsecured vis-a-vis -vis percentage of informed credit and bank credit which is mostly secured the default is very low despite substantial expansion of bank branches not only of the nationalized banks but also the national rural banks and the cooperative banks the informal credit market continues to serve the increasing needs of the internal trade industry and commerce of the country which highlight its viability and indispensability even in developed countries like usa informal and non banking commercial credit markets operate without being subjected to close customary and legal regulation characteristics of commercial banking and its variants in such circumstances instead of destroying such informal credit structure it would be quite useful to reinvigorate it sir with regard to the banking laws there is must to be said after the nationalization of banks several issues have cropped up here the government proposes certain amendments out of which some are necessary but i would like to draw the attention of the honorable minister to the banking laws bill of 
1993 in which there is a proposal for prohibition of acceptance of deposits by unincorporated bodies about this i would like to stress this point because society has different structure in this country there are certain money lenders who are rendering some some service to the people your branches have not reached there that entire structure or infrastructure whatever you name it is not there because of that saraf associations have made representation to the government on the way in which you are stopping this thing if we say you can collect deposits from 10 people only then this entire thing will come to a stand still stop